Sailors aboard an aircraft carrier get the chance to jump off the huge ship in the middle of the sea during their months-long mission. This is done under the strict supervision of shark guards and snipers who strategically stand on the deck and watch for sharks. The flight decks of these vessels can be as high as 60 feet from the ocean surface. There have been instances whereby sharks have crashed these swim calls and disrupted the leisure time of sailors. Why do sailors risk their lives to jump off the aircraft carrier? There was an incident in 2020 where a six-foot shark came close to a group of American Coast Guards having their swim call in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. An officer who was tasked with watching out for the sharks during the swim call was able to spot the monster when it was just 30 feet away from his companions. Sailors aboard the Coast Guard cutter Kimball had to fire bullets at the sea monster to stop it approaching their 40 colleagues in the water. Fortunately, nobody was harmed during the encounter. Swim calls are a huge tradition for U.S. naval sailors. At the time of their inception, swim calls were an opportunity for sailors to have a bath, seeing as there was no constant supply of water back then. Now they're often seen as a break. It's necessary for the crew members to take a breather from their regular activities and blow off some steam, which is where swim calls come into play. The commanding officer usually checks if the sea is suitable for sailors to take a warm dive by checking the seawater injection temperature before instructing the captain to notify all departments of the aircraft carrier. Not everyone that has engaged in a swim call has been lucky enough to enjoy the appropriate temperature. Crew members aboard a submarine have sometimes had to take part in the centuries-old naval tradition in ice-cold seas. It's a sought-after event as sailors are guaranteed to have a blast swimming in such a vast amount of seawater, even though they're required to stay close to the carrier. While preparing to jump off the side, sometimes sailors engage in a whimsical competition for more enjoyment. Some competitions involve sailors dressing up in costumes before diving into the water, while others involve sailors battling each other for the longest or the most skilled jump. With sailors having such fun, swim calls turn out to be a distinct memory for sailors, even for retired veterans who are back living on land full time. Sailors can leap off one of the elevators in the hangar bay during a swim call. The elevators bring them to a height of 30 feet, which is the standard height of an Olympic diving platform. Sailors must appropriately jump off the elevator into the ocean or they risk breaking a bone from wrongfully breaking the water's surface. After enjoying a long swimming break in the warm waters, sailors are brought back to the ship by scaling the cargo nets deployed by the bosun's mates or by ship's landing docks. An additional naval tradition to swim calls is steel beach parties. These picnic events involve sailors playing music and cooking barbecues on the flight deck with their companions bathing in the sea. The food event is usually sponsored by departments aboard a ship. The average aircraft carrier carries about five to 6,000 sailors at once. This magnitude of crew members requires an equally gigantic amount of meals to feed these sailors. It's a must that the sailors must be well-fed due to the sensitivity of their operations. They must be strong, alert, and battle-ready at all times. Their state of hunger, or lack thereof, plays a major role in determining the effectiveness of sailors aboard a vessel. This is why the culinary experts on an aircraft carrier work round the clock to ensure meals are always available for sailors. About 17,000 to 18,000 meals are produced every day on an aircraft carrier. There have been other shark attacks on naval sailors who were not on swim calls. On July 30th, 1945, one of the biggest tragedies in U.S. naval history happened. The USS Indianapolis got hit by torpedoes from a Japanese submarine. The huge vessel began to sink along with 200 of its crew members. The remaining 900 or so sailors were stranded in the middle of the ocean for four days. While a good number of these sailors lost their lives to dehydration and hypothermia, others were left in the hands or jaws of some very hungry sharks. Surviving sailors had to succumb to the gruesome experience of seeing shark fins surrounding them listening to the chilling screams of their colleagues, watching them forced underwater, and seeing empty, bloody life vests coming back to the ocean surface. To date, the specific number of U.S. sailors who were eaten by sharks is unknown. 
people estimate it to be somewhere between 20 to 150 sailors. The USS Indianapolis incident is often referred to as the biggest shark attack ever. The naval tradition goes back as far as the British Royal Navy in the 19th century. Known then as all hands to bathe, the tradition was more of an order to sailors to keep themselves clean and maintain good hygiene. Fresh water was a valuable commodity and simultaneously, it was considered a prize or luxury for sailors to be hygienic. Captains would order the anchors of their ships to be dropped into the ocean and crew members would be instructed to jump off the side of the vessel and get clean. Deploying a war vessel of the United States Navy is a highly dangerous mission. The vessel itself is a tremendously risky work setting. There are numerous basic safety precautions sailors must follow aboard these warships to avoid sustaining injuries. There have been several swim calls off various U.S. Navy vessels, destroyers, battle cruisers, amphibious assault ships, submarines, and aircraft carriers, to name a few. As they jump into the ocean, the world is nothing but a private swimming pool to these sailors. Usually, swim calls are carried out in warm international waters. Everyone needs a break. That's why there are usually breaks fitted into our daily work schedules and vacations fitted into our yearly working routines. A swim call is a break time for our country's naval sailors. It's a great way for them to let off steam and enjoy chilling in the abundance of the water their vessel treads upon. From the day sailors say goodbye to their loved ones and embark on a journey into the high seas, they must adapt to a new way of life. Sailors must follow a strict routine which encompasses procedures, training sessions, drills, and many others on their deployed vessels. This rigorous routine often leaves sailors beat and tired after a hard day's work, and they must do this for months. To boost the morale of its sailors, the U.S. Navy began a tradition that has become one of the most sought after of all time. It's not surprising that the U.S. Navy has some traditional routine activities, regardless of the technology or mission of a war vessel. Let us know what you think about swim calls and steel beach parties in the comment section below. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like the video if you enjoyed it. Thanks for staying tuned till the end and turn on the notifications to catch our future updates. I'll see you next time, folks. Bye for now.